Today, we take a deep dive into one of the biggest strongman competitions in the world, the Rogue Invitational. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Stoltman Brothers YouTube channel. As most of you know, the Rogue Invitational is coming to Aberdeen, Scotland next week for a weekend of strength, and we can't wait to get going. We're going to talk about the history of the Rogue Invitational and how myself and Luke have performed since we've been competing there. So guys, what is the Rogue Invitational? The Rogue Invitational is an annual strength event for both CrossFit and for Strongman, and also this year, Strong Woman. So Rogue itself is a strength equipment company based in Columbus, Ohio. The Invitational refers to the fact that a select number of athletes are invited to compete rather than a qualification system, such as Giants Live, World's Strongest Man, etc, etc. This is similar to the Arnold Classic and SMO, which are also invite-only strongman competitions. The first Rogue Invitational was held back in 2019 in Columbus, Ohio, and was just for CrossFit athletes only. 2021 saw Strongman introduced to the Rogue Invitational for the first time, held in the Dell Diamond Stadium in Austin, Texas. And the winner in 2021 was... Martins Lysus. The Dragon. And then in 2022, it was back in Austin, Texas, in the Dell Diamond Stadium, with the winner being... Alexei Novikov. Our good friend, Alexei Novikov. And then in 2023, back in Austin, Texas, your nemesis, the unbeatable. He's not unbeatable. Mitchell Hooper. In 2024... The powers that be at Rogue decided to come to Scotland in a cold and wet November. I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be a huge show in the P&J Arena in Aberdeen. We've been there before. It's a beautiful arena. It's going to be a beautiful setting. So a huge shout out to Rogue for coming over to Scotland um, and having another massive competition. Let's chat about the let's chat about the structure of the show. So the Rogue Invitational. It's a three day show. Um, so we're going to be competing for two days on the Friday and Saturday. The CrossFit show. Um, they're going to be doing Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I believe. The Rogue Record Breakers for the strong men, strong women, is going to be held on the Sunday where we can attempt to break strongman records. They're to be confirmed. I don't think we've heard what they are going to oh, be. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be interesting to see what happens. Depending on how the show goes, we'll probably, we're probably staying till Sunday, so we'll maybe do that. So on Saturday evening, the strongman winner of the 2024 Rogue Invitational will be crowned. We're going to talk about the events that have been in each year of the Rogue Invitational. So in 2021, when Martins Lisa's won, there was five events. The Max Deadlift, the Sear Dumbbell Ladder, the Wheel of Pain, a Medley, and the Inverstones. I think the Medley was a yoke interlog. Mm -hmm. I think that was the Medley, just in case mm -hmm. people wonder what a Medley is. So yeah, there were five good events. I, I, I remember that very well. I think that was one of my... Um, First times doing like a max deadlift without a suit. I pulled something. I mean, the difference in deadlift standard back then was mental, but it was still really strong. I pulled like 419 to come second place in that. <laughs> the dumbbell ladder was an absolute brutal event. Wheel of Pain was one of my favourite events that day. I loved, uh, I just think it was cool to watch as well. You're pushing this big, massive, scary looking log with a big, scary face around in a circle as fast as you can. Obviously, med let Medley yoke into uh, log and then. Inver stones to finish, a nice rugby shaped balls that are very, very hard to lift. So yeah, very uh, different five events, but it was very fun and it was cool to be part of the Rogue Invitational. Like like Luke said, it was first for CrossFit, which is massive to, to have straw man in with CrossFit was very good for us. So. 2022, the second year of the Rogue Invitational. This time there were six events, deadlift for reps, dumbbell ladder, Husserville sandbag carry, the ro Roger coaster, yoke plus log medley and the Inver stones. I don't think I did this one. No, we didn't. Do this. No, so we didn't do this one. No, but uh, we watched it. <laughs> it looked brutal. So yeah, again, you know they kind of had the same theme with the deadlift and the inverse stones and then a, a press medley. So yeah, that seemed uh, very interesting. The six events as well. Then uh, twenty twenty three, five events: deadlift for reps, sled pull, roller coaster, log lift for reps, the duel. The iron pill wasn't. <laughs> the best of events, but my favourite event of this was a long lift for reps. I had to do a bigger performance in that, and I think I got 10 reps at uh, 150, was it? Something like that, so mm. that was a pretty a pretty good event for myself, but yeah, that was fun again. Again, they're changing up different events all the time, and 
trial and, tri- trialing and error, and st- error stuff as well. So this year in Aberdeen, they're taking it back to six events. They're starting off with the Max Deadlift, a carry and press, the Inverstones, the Load and Drag, Super Medley and an Overhead Medley. So the, the, there's Inverstones again this time, but instead of it being the last day, it's on the last event on the first day. So this is going to be interesting. Again, another mix of events. Really good events to train for, really fun events. I mean, in the press medley, we have a, a 95 kilogram kettlebell to start the press medley off, which a lot of people use that to swing, like CrossFit and all that, but we have to press it above our heads, so <laughs> it's going to be fun. But yeah, it's been fun to train for, and uh, we look forward to it. And do you think, so looking over the years, you know, it's gone from five to six events. Um, my personal preference would be to have it at six events because it's over two days. Um, I think five events. You know, five events is a one-day competition, isn't it? Six events is, well, my opinion, I don't know about you, but I think six events is a lot bit better. I think looking at it last year, we had five events last year and um, you came second in it. You you lost a few points and then you were making points back up all the way. So maybe if there was one more event, you would have... Yeah, it was a deadlift that I caught, because it, was, it wasn't actually a deadlift, it was like a, one of those wobbly bar things. And, it was like a wrecking yeah, ball. Yeah, wrecking ball, basically. Yeah. yeah. But also as well, the weather had played a big part and they took out an event for like the axle. But yeah, and they changed the duel up and stuff as well. So it was out of control. But yeah, I think six, six to eight events, I think if you do two days or more, so you have a better chance of mm. being competitive and uh, yeah, it's much more better for every athlete involved. Mm. So that's the kind of the last few years that we've we've been competing there about the events. We'll chat about, like one of the big ones for the Rogue Invitational is the, the prize money. It's one of the best paying shows um, out there, if not the best. We'll go over it. So in 2021, the prize for the winner was $133,685. 2022 was $114,125. 2023 was the biggest number yet. It was $146,159, which is an amazing um, take home, you know, for, for winning first place. The beauty of the Rogue Invitational as well, all the tickets, I think some of their clothing sales as well. Everything basically. It, it goes back. Percentage. Yeah, it goes back to the athletes, which is which is great to see. You know, it's um, also the good thing about Rogue Record Bakers as well is every record you break, you get five thousand dollars. So, you know, even if you come tenth place in the Rogue, you can still win twenty twenty five k, depending on how many Rogue Record Breakers you do. So there's a lot, a lot of money up for grabs as well, and yeah, you know, to break a wee record and to earn some money and. Imagine one person breaking four records, that's $20,000, which is a decent payday taking home for just doing records. Mm-hmm. So they, they look after you as well, and yeah, you, the money speaks volume. You can see the money on the screen there, that it's uh, it's the best paying comp by quite some margin. And at the moment, the, so this year, the 2024 Rogue Invitational, the first prize for strong man and strong woman at the moment is $118,552, um, which you know, we can expect to go up depending on ticket sales, merchandise, etc., etc., which again is, is a fantastic prize. But then when we compare it to the CrossFit, top prize for that is $269,831. Um, obviously, CrossFit is probably a, a bigger sport um, throughout the world. There's more lucrative kind of sponsorship deals and stuff in CrossFit, I would say. But um, I, I'm very confident. I think that strong man and strong woman will slowly start to improve and, and we'll see a lot more kind of prize money and sponsorships happening. So, yeah, really good show to, to be part of from a financial point of view and from a, a profile point of view. You know, if you're getting invited to these shows, that states that you're, you know, top 10 in the world. That makes it CrossFit. Everyone knows CrossFit's yeah. such a massive sport. So it doesn't matter if you're number one in the world or, you know, 10th athlete in the world. Even all these athletes that are strong in it are going to be there. They're going to get their profiles boosted no matter what. Mm. So. Next up, so we'll have a look at the results, how Tom and I have done. So for me, I've competed twice in the Rogue Invitational. 2021 came eighth place. Tom and I had some time off in 2022. And 2023 came eighth place as well. So Consistent CSU. Two, two fat ladies. Just like the world. It's uh-huh. funny. Uh, consistency. All right, let's see what Mr. Consistent... No, 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 I'm just here. saying, like, if you come, like, for third place, that's... Not consistent anymore. I'd rather come fourth and third place. Oh, but honest. just say this. Yeah. It's yeah. funny how the Rogue Invitational falls exactly the same as your world's like every year you're the same position. I just I find it so not cool. everyone can win all No, I'm not saying so, I'm not yeah. saying it in a bad way. I'm just saying it's Mr. Consistent. Mr. Consistent, the world's strongest man over here. One. I'm not really consistent when I come like first, second. 
I mean. Right, and so yeah, then me at Rogue Invitational, I stayed the same years as Luke 2021 and 2023. Um, I kind of wish I did 2022 now, but it is what it is. And uh, both placed, both second place. My three points with Martin's leases. Um, to be honest, I was buzzing with third, uh, second place in 2021 because that's away from Will Straw as man. I just wanted to put on a good performance, which I did. Martin's leases was uh, really strong then as well. He, I won two events, second in two events, and I think I'd lost points in the dumbbell ladder, which again back then was probably my worst event. So yeah, 2023 for fast forward. Mitchell Hooper won that by two points, second in the roller coaster, won the last two events. Sledpool lost points, but I think I lost more points on the first event, which was a deadlift. Also, you know, taking out an event, it's one of these things. I could have maybe caught him, but yeah. Two points won it, so two second places. Oh, wow, you're pretty consistent there, Tommy, by imagine. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. two, being yeah. two seconds is a... Uh, it's not bad. I want to get a first place, man. I need to... Well, hopefully, just have to concentrate on ourselves and see what happens. Who knows? So, yeah, that's our performances in the, the invitation over the last couple of years. Um, feels like we've done it more than twice. Yeah, it does, actually. <laughs> like, it feels like it's been around for ages. It does. It's weird. So, like, let's let's talk about 2024 and the athletes competing. Mm -hmm. There's going to be 10 athletes, Tom. You want to read them out? Mitchell Hooper. Yeah. Even this is a surprise. Half for Beyonce. This is his first appearance. You, you forget that he's been around so long, and this is his first ever time at the Rogue Invitational. So that's going to be... That's obviously going to bring loads of fans as well. Myself... And Luke, Tom and Luke Stoltman, Evan Singleton, Matthew Rag, Pavlo Kodiaka, Hanson Pavlo, Tristan Hoff, Bobby Thompson, and last but not least, Thomas Evans. So yeah, a good amount of guys. You know, I, I know I see a lot of people saying, why wasn't Trey invited or Mateus? And um, I don't know. There's other guys that were missing out as well. Uh, Maxime, for example, as well. But um, we get our invitations quite early on in the year for the Rogue Invitational. And Mateusz, um, Trey, I think Maxime as well, they all had, had injuries. So, Although, you know, Trey's looking fantastic. So, but I, I don't think anybody expected Trey to be mm. back this quickly. I, I mean, when I seen that injury last year at the Rogue, I kind of thought to myself, and he must be out for like a year, a year and a half. But like fair play to him, he's come back and he's come back hungry, which, again, you know, He'll be watching Rob wanting to be there, but it'll make him hungry and hungry. And his last few competitions have been unbelievable. So he's absolutely smart. Fair play to him. Yeah. So he's coming back stronger. And I, I don't think like Trey will hold like a grudge against like no. Rogan because he knows that. Just one of those things, you know. Yeah. You have to. You can't. You can't invite someone that's injured. That's just a risk that they, that Rogue would be taking as well. So. But yeah, we can't can't wait to see Big Trey back next year at the invitation and all the competitions. I think he's going to smash it. And same with uh, Mateus as well. Um, Tess is looking good. I think he's doing the Magnus for Magnuson Classic, which again is and I think a nice week comp for him to go back to and because mm. I think last year he came to Rogan and he was a bit injured still as well. But this it's great to see him do that and then see what he does in twenty twenty five because when he's a hundred percent he's it's scary, yeah. He's like the strongest man not to win World Straws mm. man, I think. Like mm. Derek Poundstone was back in the day. Yeah, definitely. I think Matt kilikoski has got that title now, so I just a wee shout out to Alexei Novikov as well, because obviously a past winner, um Alexei had to pull out after he got a little bit of an injury at Vegas. Some, I'm not really too sure what's going on, but yeah, sending you big love to yeah, Alexi. I think the rest and recovery will do him the world of good for the rest of this year. We'll see him next year, definitely. So yeah, that's all the athletes competing. So we'll do a little bit of a, an update on our prep, obviously. <coughs> um, you've been battling with a, a bit of an injury. You've taken a new coach. You've, you're, like, I've been watching your training's completely changed. It's amazing to see that work ethic. Even like the stuff that you're doing in the morning as well. You've got a six pack now, boys, eh? <laughs> no, I'm but I mean, it, it looks like things are going going up a lot better now for you. Your confidence back, you've got that fire back, that kind of belief as well is there. So I think, I mean, I don't want to say anything, but you just go in there, do what you can do, and then, you know, I think a lot of people are putting Mitchell and Thor up there and maybe not talking about you, and that's where you're kind of quite dangerous, I think. I like that, yeah. I mean, like I said, um, not really talked about the coach match. I obviously did a video three weeks ago or something when I joined him. And uh, yeah, I kind of thought, yeah, he was going to be, he's really good at what he does for his uh, injury prevention. But how he's got me in this three weeks has been unbelievable. But I think a lot of it's mindset as well. And that's what he said to me. Yeah, my mindset is just very, very good. You know, I've been doing cold water in the mornings now as well. And <laughs> something that I said I would never, ever do. So I... Uh, yeah, so wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Luke said, <laughs> rewind that for one second. You're doing cold water in the morning. Yeah. 
Again, that's again, because I think again, because he actually told me. Yes. Yeah. Well, Aaron said to me as well, it was people with ADHD and, autism, ADHD and autism struggle to naturally increase endorphins. And I didn't know about this. And he said he does it in the morning because he's got ADHD. And I obviously have autism. And then, so I just did it, went with it and on. And then I do hot stuff in the, at night time just to switch off. But yeah, the training's been going very, very well. Much Honestly, much better than I ever thought. Um, a lot of aerobic fitness as well. I'm doing a lot more on the, like, the bike, the assault bike I've been doing every single day. Um, so, yeah, it's just a big positive for myself right now. And I'm looking at the long term as well. In three weeks' time, if he can get me like this, and it's going to be good in the future. But, yeah, I'm going into Rogue, hungry. And, yeah, I liked how half and Mitchell's getting a lot of uh, talk because, you know, <laughs> if they don't perform to their fullest, then it's, it's all in them. But, yeah, I'm going in, nothing to lose, going to give my all, 100% battle. Aaron's going to be there as well at the Rogue, so exactly what I'll be doing it here, I'm going to be doing it at the Rogue, following his work, uh, following his warm-ups. He's telling me what to do, and I'm just going to go and perform, and like I'm doing in training, so it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's and how was yours then? Again, Luke's been, uh, he's been absolutely battling it. He's been on the floor, lying on the floor after doing his assault bike, sandbag things, whatever he's doing. I was like, holy crap, boy, yeah? Gordon Bennett. I thought I was intense until I seen this guy. No, what you asked me before I went with Aaron, I thought it was intense. Then when I went with Aaron, I am 95% intense. Then I seen Luke and he's like 97.5. So there's, there's always room for improvement, is what we're saying. And that's that's what I think my training is. There's, there is obviously more room for improvement, but yeah, I'm feeling good. I think I think we both agreed, you know, that going into Rogue, it's going to be like a, how quick you can recover and how, how, how long you can hold that 100% level up. You know, it's... Um, you don't want to hold anything back like in the medleys you want to go, 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 go um, and I feel that both of us at the moment we're, we're very good, we're very conditioned I'm doing the peloton every morning I'm doing cold water every morning um, then we're doing a, I'm doing a salt bike as well similar to you repetition, repetition just how uncomfortable we can make it in we're going to be in the Commonwealth uh, indoor cycling team but there's this amount of salt bikes you've been doing eh? <laughs> I, would, Jeez, oh. I wouldn't call that fair but it's, it's going good. So I, I'm just excited. I just want to go down and, and compete. I want to be just the best version that I can be. I know when I go into a competition, I, I compete very well, especially when it's in Scotland or in the UK. And I think that's the biggest thing for us this year is that it's a three-hour drive for us down to Aberdeen. We'll get there. It's the same food we've been eating. It's the same environment. It's the same time. So it's now it's up to the, the American guys, the Canadian guys coming over to to readjust, to reset their clocks and everything and see how, how the, the, the lads get on. And yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited. I can't wait to compete. We just have to do exactly what we do here at the competition. Yeah. That's what Aaron's drilled into my head as well. It's like we're not doing anything different. You're waking up same time, you're doing your core in the morning and you're just treating it exactly like you do at training at the comp. And that's something that, you know, sometimes when I've done comps in the past, I've done different routines, but it's 100% staying my routine. And, you know, it's making me feel good. It's making me feel strong. So let's just keep going. And like Luke said, we've got the advantage. We don't have to wake up at 4 a.m. on Wednesday and get an, uh, to an airport. We literally wake up whenever we want on a Wednesday and take it out however we want, uh, long we want to get to Aberdeen. But we know we're not going to be jet lagged. We're not going to be sleepy. We're going to be buzzing and ready to go. So, yeah, we're ready. No excuses, nothing. We're going to give everything in there. Yeah, see what happens. But may the best man win, but we're ready. So. Okay, guys. Well, that is our little deep dive into the Rogue Invitational over the years. So a huge shout out to, to Rogue for, you know, keeping the strongman competition going, coming over to Scotland. I think it's amazing. Really can't wait. Really excited to put on a show for everyone coming to watch. There is still tickets available, so please go check them out. Um, it's the P&G Arena. And yeah, just come and support. Live watch stream it. on YouTube as well. So if you can't come down to Aberdeen, tune on to YouTube, tune into Rogue Invitational, it's free. Rogue, they're on the Rogue channel and go come watch some spicy action all weekend. Boom, 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 boom. And be sure, guys, on Sunday night we're going to drop a video of our training, a little hype video for Rogue, just to showcase what we've been doing. We haven't shown too much of training over the last few weeks, but hopefully you enjoy it. So be sure to check that out. Thanks for watching, as always. Just remember, all the weights in the video are fake. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, smile, and stay spicy. And please don't stop ringing that. Please don't ever stop ringing that little bell. Ding a ling.